We're the creators of the AADL TV show, Recipe Share, now in its fourth season. And we have some exciting news. We've created a cookbook. Our cookbook is titled, Thanks for Sharing, which includes recipes by all three of us, some of which you may have heard here on the show, and some that we have yet to share. Our cookbook includes dozens of recipes ranging from breakfast to dinner with snacks, appetizers, and desserts too. These are all our original recipes created by us or passed down in our families. We're so happy that we get to share them with you. If you're interested in getting a free copy of our cookbook while supplies last, please email recipeshare at aadl.org with your name and the library you'd like to pick it up at. Thanks for Sharing is also available in Braille. Just let us know if you would like the Braille version. And feel free to email recipeshare at aadl.org if you have any questions. We hope you enjoy. Recipe share, recipe share. Share a little recipe with recipe share. Recipe share, recipe share. Share a little recipe. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is As Seen on TikTok. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined today by Elizabeth and Beth to tell us about the recipes. So, Elizabeth, tell us what you chose today. Uh, thank you. I will. Um, I absolutely love watching food TikTok. Um, it's I, love, I think it's awesome, especially the ones that are done really well are so fun to watch. But I wasn't sure what I wanted to make for this. I was talking to my husband, Brian, about it. And he was like, well, a lot of what they make on TikTok is like so decadent. And then it's true. I always feel like I see like people like, like just like making these elaborate things that are just like, they look delicious, but it's like, I don't want to do that. Or <laughs> the other thing, and maybe this is just my algorithm is always like, men by a body of water like elaborately cooking like some type of meat and like making like a like like compound butter to put on it and like but doing it all outside on like a large like slab of wood so anyway I didn't I don't have any of that so um I ended up making something that was an older TikTok recipe that I had been wanting to make for quite a while because it sounded up my alley, but I just had never gotten around to it. So I did make the baked feta pasta that um, you may have seen probably. Um, and this was very easy. Um, basically you preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Uh, and then in a baking dish, you dump um, a couple pints of cherry or grape tomatoes um, and a block of feta in kind of in the middle of them. And then, um, drizzle with olive oil and season with salt and red pepper flakes. And this is where I added my first modification that I didn't, people have modified it a lot, but I don't know what was in the original, but I also pour, um, quartered two shallots and threw those in there because I really like shallots. So I did that. Um, and then you bake for 40 to 45 minutes until the tomatoes are like burst and the feta is golden on top. Um, in the meantime, you cook a uh, package of pasta in a large pot of boiling water and drain it, but save half of a cup of the pasta water. And then um, basically you then just dump the pasta into the skillet when it, or into the baking dish when it comes out of the oven, stir everything up, it, it kind of turns into a sauce, the feta and the tomatoes um, and the shallots. And um, then it, I did end up adding some of the pasta water that I'd set aside to kind of make it a little more sauce-like. Um, another modification I did was it suggested grating a lemon for lemon zest on it. That was nice. I liked doing that because um, it did seem like pretty simple the original way. And then I garnished it with basil because we had so much basil in our garden. So I have a photo of what it looks like the baking dish coming out of the oven with the feta and the tomatoes looks pretty good. Um, and then I have a photo of what it looks like after I finished it. And um, it was interesting, you know, it was, it was good. It was good. It wasn't, it did not blow my mind. Um, I do think sometimes some of the cooks on TikTok like are like younger folks that haven't 
cooked that much in their life, which is totally fine, but they're like learning. And this is like an amazing concept to them. Um, so it was good, you know, and I would certainly do it again. Maybe if I needed like a simple pasta, um, I like feta. I like, you know, it was good, good way to use up tomatoes. Um, you know, I served with a salad, so I enjoyed it. It was good. It worked out, you know, it was, I didn't feel like it was pretty foolproof. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I did like my little additions too, with the shallot and the lemon, um, and the basil garnish. So, um, it's two thumbs up, I would say to the TikTok recipe and certainly something that, you know, if you're looking for a pasta and I know Beth, you like feta, so it might be something you would like to try. So. Totally. Yeah, I, I have made it. I mean, without even looking, I just had seen it. On, it really went viral, I think, during the pandemic. Um, so at some point, you know, I, I I probably didn't even follow directions. I just put did the tomato and feta. But I mean, did you like it? it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's not to like? What's not to like? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I've seen people also um, not do it as pasta, but just serve it with like toasted baguette as well. Mm -hmm. It's like more like yes. a bruschetta type deal. Yeah, it yes. looks awesome. Yeah, that, that's that would be good. Oh, and one thing I would say is I would have added a little more feta. Like I just got a block. It wasn't, it was like pretty standard, but I am a cheese gal. So I would have enjoyed like maybe another third more of it. So, but yeah, it would be super good as like a dip or- okay spread on bruschetta easy um cool beth what did you do oh boy you guys okay so i had i said previously that i i might go long so i'll, I'll try to uh be succinct here so what i made was a dish called spaghetti al assassina and it means killer spaghetti um I first saw the recipe though in Cook's Illustrated, I have to admit. And their recipe as they are in Cook's Illustrated is very, very fussy and they break it down. Um, when I saw it on TikTok, of course TikTok, they don't give you, um, I mean, at least the ones I saw, there's no uh, ingredient sizes and stuff. You kind of have to figure it out for yourself. So I was, so I'm gonna be sharing a very detailed, recipe and then the, another one that I made that's super simple. Um, first of all, because the, uh, what do you call it? Um, the Cooks Illustrated is, is a little fussier. They, they're real specific about the size pasta and these specific tomatoes uh, that are cold strained tomatoes. The brand is Pommy. I'm going to post a picture because I did end up seeing them at Bushes. Uh, but we had seen it at by the pound. So that's, it's just, it's almost like a tomato sauce, but it's cold strain. And I guess it's, it's called um, something pas passata, tomatoes passata. Um, the point, the truth is you don't have to use that, but anyway, so um, the point is this, you make a broth with either water in this first case, water and some tomato paste, or in the second case, I use chicken broth and a little tomato paste. Make a little broth, set it aside, keep it warm. The point of this whole spaghetti thing is that you're cooking your spaghetti in your sauce, in your frying pan, okay? Have you seen that before? Okay, okay. Um, so you are, uh, you put uh, garlic and some red peppers, season, you know, and, uh, and saute them, and then you add the strained tomatoes. But the second one I made, I used way more garlic, way more um, red pepper flakes, and I didn't have the strained tomatoes. We grabbed the wrong kind, so I just used regular old tomato sauce. So, okay, you're sauteing. It's getting real fragrant. You put in your tomato sauce. Then you put in your pasta, and I have a little video of my pasta cooking from raw into the pan that I'll show you. And then, um, then you're taking the broth and you're poking around with your the strands of spaghetti, and you you're ladling the the broth that you made onto the pasta. And you just keep when it cooks up, and you ladle more, and you cooks up, and you ladle more. 
what happens is, and, and what um, was real uh, specific in uh, Cook's Illustrated is you have to let, you have to fight the urge to flip your pasta because it's supposed to get kind of charred. And so it, it also ends up tasting like deeply, like, you know, like a sun-dried tomato has that deeper, intense tomato flavor. It's like that and the whole tomato -y part gets imbued, imbued into the pasta. Because otherwise, when you're cooking your pasta, it's, it, it absorbs water. This way, it's absorbing the sauce. So anyway, um, in on TikTok, they they did this. They cook, 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 and it's it takes it takes about forty minutes or maybe even more. I, I'm trying not. I didn't look at the clock because it was just like, really, are you not done yet? But um, they okay, yeah. On TikTok, they this person ended up uh, putting the burrata on it. So that's why I wanted to make it a second time by add, and adding burrata. Um, there was one other thing. Uh, oh, the whole story. Why is it called killer or uh, spaghetti assassina? Uh, this is what I learned on TikTok because a, um, an inebriated chef was distracted by a beautiful woman and he, put too much, you know, garlic and too much red pepper. And even on TikTok, I saw they put chili paste, too much of that in there. He dumped the noodles in the sauce. Who does that, you know? And then he gave it to the customer and the customer said, are you trying to kill me? Uh, so that's how it came up with spaghetti assassina. Um, and if I haven't mentioned all my pictures, there's probably one last one, but uh, it was, it was, it was very tasty. I, I did, I liked the less fussy version because I had um, chicken broth already. So, uh, and then tomato paste and didn't worry about this type of, you know, strained tomatoes. You could really make it with whatever you have on hand. Um, if you, but you do have to let it cook and let it get a little charry, which is not always, you know, it's just counterintuitive to how you make spaghetti, you know. So that's my story. That's what I learned on TikTok. And uh, what do you think? Well, I want to know how thick the sauce ends up being. I mean, or does the pasta absorb a lot of it? I mean, there's still got to be... The pasta absorbs it all. It's oh, really, okay. Yeah, wow. it's, it's like just all like reddened. I'll show you, you know, like I said, you'll, you'll yeah, see I, I got to see but, it. Um, it just looks like pasta with some sauce in it. You know, it's just not sauce over it. And it's, and it's just different colors and some are crunchy and some are soft and uh, yeah. it's, it's really different, but it's good. And um, the second time too, when I added way more garlic, like eight cloves of garlic instead of two and like a tablespoon of uh, red pepper flakes instead of a teaspoon made a big difference. That's why the burrata was nice because it, it uh, cooled off that spice. Cooled it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm super interested in that technique. I do want to try cookie pasta like fully in a sauce sometime for sure. Look it up on the TikTok. So um, yeah, thanks for letting me share that. Uh, and Katie, what did you end up making? Okay. Well, I've never looked at TikTok before this, uh, thinking about this category. So this is uh, new for me. Um, definitely some interesting stuff out there in the TikTok cooking world. So what I was doing was just kind of like looking at it, making a little short list of things that I thought I might be able to accomplish because I think you're right, Elizabeth, that things are like pretty elaborate. I'm like, well, that looks amazing, but I would never ever do that or like <laughs> I came across this one girl who makes coffees that are like this big and they look amazing but like I'm not making a giant coffee um so anyway what I did was I looked through I made like a short list and then uh, the library got this book called as cooked on tiktok so I thought well that could be helpful for somebody who's more comfortable with a cookbook than actually being on tiktok so I looked through and I was specifically looking through this book to see if there would be anything that I had seen previously that I would, you know, want to look through the book for and try. And so what I ended up trying was this Delgona coffee with caramel. So I did actually end up going with a, a coffee recipe um, 
but this one seemed attainable unlike some of the others, uh, is a very, very simple. So you just, in a medium bowl, you take two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of instant coffee crystals. I use the Starbucks brand and then two tablespoons of cold water. And you take a hand mixer and you mix it all up for two to four minutes. You just whip it. And this is amazing to watch because it goes from this dark, deep coffee color to what they call Timberland boot brown color. So it's like a, a tan color, which is kind of neat because it's looking like it's got some cream in it, but doesn't yet. Uh, it just is light and whipped. And so then um, this recipe says, take your mug or glass and um, squirt caramel around the outside of it and then put in ice, put in milk and then top it with your coffee mixture. But what I found, cause I did make this several times was that I really like putting in my ice cause I, you can make this warm too, but um, I like iced coffee. So I put in my ice and then drizzle the caramel all over top of the ice. So it's sort of like in mixed in the drink, then put your milk and then put your whipped coffee mixture on top. And I found that that just melded the flavors together a little bit better, but oh my gosh, you guys, this was tasty. This tasted like something from a coffee shop that I should not have been able to make in my own home. Super fancy, but like it seriously takes less than five minutes. And you can throw everything in the dishwasher so there's not very much mess. Um, it's really pretty too. Like you can see in this picture how pretty theirs look. My my cup's a little bit different than their nice little glass cup, but I do have a picture of it. But this is something that I will definitely make for myself when I'm looking for a, something a little fancier that I can make at home or, you know, to impress my friends. I think this is probably going to come out and I'll make um, more than one batch. Although it does say if you're going to double this recipe or even like triple it, that you should consider using a stand mixer instead of the hand mixer. Also says you can whip it, but uh, like hand whip it with a whisk, but that it takes a lot longer and can be painful. So, um, but yeah, that, so, and actually I just wanted to give a little bit more background in that, say that this is a, this is a traditional South Korean recipe. So it's something that um, has been around for, I think, since like the 90s, but it just recently um, got big on TikTok. People were calling it the pandemic coffee. So it's something that was just got really big in the last couple of years. And I also wanted to mention something else about this cookbook. I think this cookbook is really cute and I would definitely check it out. But just on top of being cute, they also like explained this recipe really well. You're not going to be able to see it, but this whole page is like scientific explanation for why this recipe works, right? So it's talking about surfactants and how it's holding glass, gas and liquid together as you're whipping stuff. So it's really cool. I thought this, um, the cookbook was really, really well done, ex especially for folks like me who might be curious about like what TikTok is, but not really sure how to approach it. So uh, that was my TikTok recipe. Katie, are there, um, do they give like the science behind all the recipes or I, I know I checked that out before and I think that's maybe how I got the idea, but. Um... <laughs> There's definitely notes for all of the recipes, okay. but that is the one that I noticed Okay, so here's another one. Like this whole page is about steak cuts, like which steak cuts to use for which. So yeah, it does. Okay. Not every recipe, but I think like there's notes on them and like some of the notes are a little bit more interesting and scientific than ones you generally see in a cookbook. I just want to say one last thing about the old TikTok because <laughs> Right. I, I mean, I don't watch it that much, but what I found was so many of the recipes, like there's be doing demonstrations and then, but it, then there's a voiceover talking about something unrelated yeah. and this is whole other like story going on. And there's no ending to the story because it just keeps flipping back to the beginning of, you know, this pastry or whatever, but it's just like, I, I can appreciate a cookbook. <laughs> so thanks for sharing. <laughs> I do think the one thing I do well, there's plenty of things I like about cooking TikTok. I like watching it, but I think that it can, like, I bet if I saw that coffee, Katie, 
I, if I, if I saw that in a store or like saw a photo of it, I would be like, wow, like that's like so complicated and amazing. And like, how would one even do that? Like, I would assume that would be something like totally unapproachable to me in the home. Mm-hmm. Um, just cause it looks so cool. And like, but then you see it happen or you like read about how to do it and you're like, oh, that isn't that hard. Like I can do this, you know? And like, yeah. I felt that way when I made these like carnitas that I saw on TikTok, cause I've always been like super daunted by that. But then I watched like this lady make them and I was like, oh, okay. Like I can like follow these steps to, for things that I would typically be like, oh, that's like something I would like purchase outside the home. So mm-hmm. I do think that can be kind of cool with the visual aids and, Mm -hmm. you know, that's cool that they added the science too. Yeah. Yep, Yep. for sure. I totally agree. Well, I want to say thank you to everybody for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we'll be talking about a twist on a classic. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe.